Hello everybody, so today I thought I would film a video all about my kind of mental health story. I've touched on my mental health um, on my blog, kind of touched it on here, but I've never really explained the full story of it. So I thought I'd just do a video explaining what I've got, um, how I kind of got to where I am, and yeah, just a bit more about me so you kind of know who I am. So it kind of all started when I was seven years old. I had my first panic attack. I think it was when I was around seven. We were on holiday in Devon, um, and we went down a massive hill to go to a beach. And as we were coming back up the hill after we'd been on the beach, it was literally a full on vertical kind of drop. And there was traffic all on the hill um, and our car couldn't quite get up here. So the car literally just rolled back quite far, I think, um, into a wall and crashed. And I just remember the smell of like burning plastic. And I remember looking back and seeing the sea and thinking we are gonna go into that. And I just remember getting really kind of worked up and panicked to the point where my mum had to take me out the car. We didn't have any shoes on because we'd just come off of the beach. And she had to take me up the hill just to get away from it all. And that's kind of the first point at where I felt really kind of like anxious and worried and kind of felt trapped as well. And that's why maybe I don't like feeling trapped now. So yeah, that happened and I had a panic attack and we went up to a restaurant, I think, or a hotel at the top of the hill and I got free ice cream for having a panic attack. So I wish that could happen every single time. So that's kind of where that started and we knew how to kind of tackle it at the time because I unfortunately have kind of grown up around like anxiety and depression people in my family have had it so i kind of knew what it was at a really young age which is good because i was aware of it and i kind of didn't really need to get like a diagnosis to know that it's that if you know what i mean but yeah it's kind of runs in my family so i really have no hope it then kind of developed onto school at quite a young age i was really confident not so much in lessons but kind of outside of school i was really confident on the playground i was really confident and didn't really care. It then kind of developed into like later primary school where I would be silent in lessons. I would not put my hand up. I would barely talk to friends. Like I just didn't like being the center of attention. Whereas at a young age, I would love to be the center of attention. That's kind of where I noticed something wasn't quite right because I was, it wasn't that I was shy. It was just, I didn't feel like I could speak. I didn't really want to speak up. So yeah, that's kind of like my younger years. Um, and I've had to kind of deal with my family having problems as well so I've had to kind of grow up around it so that kind of put not pressure on me but I was very confused at a young age at what was going on. So then moving on to secondary school again I was really quiet I didn't have a very strong friendship group we had one main group that everyone kind of just joined and then left joined left it kind of it was very sporadic. <laughs> but I did have a few main friends that I was friends with for the whole of my secondary school life. In secondary school, I was very quiet, didn't like put my hand up, didn't like talking. I hated drama, anything where I had to be kind of the center of attention, anything where I had to raise my voice, I just couldn't do. And I don't know what it was. It wasn't that I was like unconfident or shy. It was just, I literally felt like I couldn't speak. You know, I just sort of put it on, oh yeah, I am shy. When really, I'm not actually that shy. But so then moving on to kind of later secondary school, it was only a few years ago, I think 2013. My friendship group kind of went against me. I can't remember what happened and it seems so stupid now, but I kind of didn't have any friends at all. Maybe kind of one that just went between like the two sides of the argument, who is still my friend now. I was very alone, didn't really have any friends. Didn't like going to school purely for the fact I had no one to sit with at lunch and yeah, I was very alone. I didn't really understand why. I didn't know what I'd done wrong, um, but for some reason everyone just went against me and obviously that made me feel really isolated. And I felt like I couldn't really speak up about, you know, what was going on and like how I felt. So again, that's kind of another example of when I've been really closed off. That eventually got resolved to a certain extent, but it was never kind of, there was never a reason to why it happened, it just happened. Also in my younger uh, secondary school years, I did kind of get picked on. I wouldn't say, I want to say bullied, but I wasn't bullied. I was just picked on by one of my old friends. And I got called fat, ugly, you know, the typical names. And obviously at a young age that affected me a lot. It affected my self-confidence, still affects me now. So I think that's another reason why I, I feel like I can't really be myself because 
I'm fat and ugly. So yeah, I have no confidence really. Well, I have confidence, but I don't have a lot of it. Then in my sixth form years, that's the year 12 and year 13, so I was around 17, 18, yeah, around that age. There was one lesson that I couldn't really go in. My mum and dad don't really know about this, but I think my sister does but it was my media lesson. I think it's because I didn't really have any close friends in it and I just didn't feel comfortable in there because obviously media, you have to be quite kind of confident and everything when you're filming. But I was obviously not and everyone else was and they all had kind of one massive group of friends in there and they obviously stuck together and I was the outsider. And I hated going in there because I just felt like every time they laughed, whispered, it was about me. I felt trapped in that room and obviously that goes back to the feeling of feeling trapped in the car. So I didn't like that feeling. So I had to get myself out of that situation. So it got to the point where my anxiety was so bad and I felt physically sick going to that lesson that I had to talk to the teachers and say, look, I'm struggling. Um, can I like teach myself out of the room or go wherever I need to go? And they were so supportive of that. I think without them, I wouldn't have been able to do media. I managed to get an A in my coursework and a B in my exam and that was just down to them saying yeah you can go off and work on your own. I think it's because they trusted me and they knew that I would do the work. I literally went into those lessons, grabbed the paperwork that I needed and went off back to my sixth form like building and just did my work on my own there and then I'd go back and say this is what I've done, is that okay? And I literally taught myself that A level with the guidance of them that you know they said do you need if you need any more help come to us. And they were really, really supportive. And I'm so grateful for that because not many teachers are like that. That's another point when I knew kind of something wasn't quite right. And, you know, there was something stopping me going into that lesson, but I didn't know what. Then it kind of moved on to going to parties. Obviously everyone was turning kind of 18. It was that kind of time. And I didn't get invited to a lot, but the ones I did get invited to, I felt fine when I went. However, when it kind of got busy, crowded, loud, when I had a bit to drink, um, I got really anxious. And it's kind of a normal reaction for people who have anxiety to get anxious even more so when they're drunk. So I wasn't sort of scared by it. I was like, I know it's gonna happen. But I drank anyway, because that's me. Yeah, I kind of got really anxious in the crowds and I did have a few panic attacks at a few parties. Again, my parents, my family don't really know this, but it happened, it's fine. Nothing major, just like small little like, oh, I don't feel quite right. Um, and my friend kind of took me away from the situation and she really helped me. That's again another point when I knew something wasn't quite right. I didn't like being in a crowded place. I didn't like feeling vulnerable. So that's kind of like my younger years. So now moving around to March, April last year. Um, I've touched on this on this channel already, but I went through a breakup last year. It was only a short relationship. I mean, being in a longer relationship now, I do look back on that and think that was a really short relationship and not much happened. I felt happy in that relationship and it sort of just ended out of nowhere. Nothing bad happened. Like we didn't have any arguments, nothing like we weren't resentful towards each other. But it just kind of ended and it was like, my happiness was just like cut off. And it's like, no, you're not allowed to be happy anymore. And I felt like I was the problem with that. So again, my confidence was knocked. I was like, what have I done wrong? You know, it turns out now it's just, it wasn't meant to be and that's fine. Cause I'm now in a really happy relationship that I feel like is meant to be. <laughs> yeah, looking back on it, it's stupid that the way I felt, but understandable. So yeah, this time last year I was, a mess. I again didn't have many friends. I had one main friend down here, one that lives in Norfolk, so we couldn't really see each other a lot. But the one friend that is down here, she saw me pretty much every day, kept me kind of active and get out of the house. Yeah, I just didn't feel very happy. I just felt like the world was against me and I felt very, very insecure and very unconfident and I just didn't really know what was wrong. I just didn't want to get out of bed. I just didn't want to do anything. I just felt useless. And I know that I felt like that because of uni as well. I'd finished uni and when you've been doing something 24 seven and then you go from doing that to nothing, you feel so useless and I feel like it now. So I'm doing everything I can to find stuff to do. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. So that I was kind of like accepting then all the other feelings I was like why am I feeling this way so we went to IB for me and my two friends we got very drunk some nights and had some very deep conversations and one of my friends says just go to a GP talk about it it doesn't like her to talk about it 
so that kind of pushed me and once I got back from that holiday I sat there and thought about it and I was like do I need to talk to them and I just sat there for a good few days thinking about it and then it got to the point where I was like I'm just gonna do it and um, you know what could go wrong so I I remember sitting on the sofa one day just feeling so scared but I texted my mum and I was like I don't feel okay I want to go to the doctor we're a very open family so it wasn't that I was scared to tell them because of that it was just you know how do you approach that kind of thing and she was like okay that's fine go do what you want we'll support you so I booked an appointment and I went with my friend who supported me throughout all of that and I basically wrote down a massive list of how I felt, gave it to the doctor, she read it and then she asked me questions so I couldn't really say it myself but I did write it down and that really helped. And she diagnosed me with anxiety and depression so I just accepted that and I was like okay I can work with that and I could deal with it myself. She did offer me kind of you know like Samaritans and a local youth kind of help centre. I think I was just above the age limit for that so I couldn't really go into that. So yeah she offered me help but I was like no I'm fine I can deal with it. I left it and then I went back to uni and again this year has flown by. I've kind of loved uni this year, it's gone really quick. I've enjoyed doing the work, it's been really stressful but more manageable than the first year. That was fine, I was just I'm very anxious but it was kind of like it's okay because it's because of uni, once I stop I'll be fine. But it kind of got to the point at the end of the year where I was like I kind of need a little bit of extra help. So I self-referred myself to my local wellbeing like mind service and they called me up the next day and they said can we give you a phone assessment you know in a few days time. I had the phone assessment, it was with a therapist um, so they kind of have a bit more knowledge on mental health than a general practitioner. So I explained all of my kind of symptoms to her and she was like, you've got social anxiety. And I never really thought of that, stupidly. <laughs> um, I just thought, oh, I've got general anxiety, which I kind of do have as well, but it's more along the lines of social anxiety. And then she said, you've got obviously the depression that comes with that, which is kind of what you get with every mental illness. So I kind of just accepted the depression side as that's just kind of what you get with it. I was focused on the social anxiety, so I was like, okay, what can I do? And they have offered me um, cognitive behavioural therapy, CBT. Um, so I'm on the waiting list for that at the moment. I'm quite apprehensive about that because it doesn't really look at the core issues. It just looks at what's currently happening and how you can cope with it. And I know a lot of people are very kind of like iffy about it. Some people it's worked, but I'm bit apprehensive but I thought I'll give it a go anyway because that's all they really offered to me. So yeah, I have social anxiety. <laughs> I have touched on it but I don't go into it a lot. Doing stuff like YouTube and my blog and everything has helped a lot. I suppose it's like exposure to whatever. Even though I'm, I can come across confident on camera or on my blog or wherever, I'm inside, I'm like dying. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm now on the waiting list. And for some reason I was like really like I'm in an iron about making this video because it's hard to talk about stuff like this, which shouldn't be the case because it's you would be fine talking about a broken leg, but why are we not okay talking about our mental health? So I was very like unsure whether to make it or not, but I am glad I have because it's kind of got everything out there. I think I struggled a lot because I was supposed to be, well, I was known to be like the happy one in the family. I was always the one to make jokes and be really light-hearted and happy and then when I felt a little bit down, when I feel down, I feel like I'm kind of letting my family down a bit because it's like I'm supposed to be the happy one and it's not that they've made me feel that way, it's just I feel that way myself. So yeah, that's why I was kind of worried about making this video because I did say a few things that they don't know about me in it. I think that's pretty much all of my story so far. If you would like to ask me any questions, I am planning on filming a mental health Q&A mainly around social anxiety and kind of my story so if you would like to ask me any questions leave them in the comments below and I will answer them in the next video if you want to just ask me questions about this video then leave them below as well and I'll reply back to your comments please like share subscribe and everything that you can do on here also I'd like to take this moment to explain about a project that I'm setting up called student stigma it's aimed around giving students a voice. So students of all ages, so whether it's a primary school student or a university student, 
anyone and it's at the moment it's just going to be kind of a blog website where people can publish their stories publish anything that they want to within reason about their mental health as a student so it can be past experiences maybe in primary school or secondary school like I've spoken about today or you know tips on how to cope with it so if you are you know a primary school kid and you are suffering and you need help they can read the student stigma website and realize that they are not alone and what they can do to get help and it's kind of breaking the stigma that students get about their mental health I've often been told I can't have anxiety because it's just the normal anxious feelings that I get for being a student for being stressed which is fair enough but it's kind of breaking the barrier between normal stress and abnormal stress that affects your life so that's kind of what my project is about. I'm so close to 100 followers on Twitter. Um, I'll leave it all linked below. I'm in the process of branding it and setting up the website. I'm trying to get the ball rolling, so I'm gonna leave everything linked below. If you would like to publish any posts on it, have a think and you can message me on Twitter or email me, which will be linked below. And yeah, it's just gonna be kind of like a safe place to share your story and it's of anyone of any age and you don't have to be a student now. It could be about your past experiences, I hope that kind of helps people to open up a bit more because I certainly didn't at a young age. Thank you for watching, thank you for all of the continuous support that you give me and I will see you very soon in another video.